Right. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this, the uh, 19th <laughs> meeting in 2014 of the Economy, Energy and Tourism Committee. Can I welcome all members? And I can remind everyone, please, to turn off or at least turn to silent all mobile phones and other electronic uh, devices. Uh, item one on the agenda. Can I ask the committee if we are content to take items five and six in private? Agreed. Great, thank you. <laughs> Item two on the agenda. We have uh, four uh, pieces of uh, subordinate legislation to consider this morning. Four affirmative instruments relating to the Land Registration Scotland Act 2012. These are the Land Register of Scotland, a Rate of Interest on Compensation Regulations 2014 in draft, the Registers of Scotland Fees Order 2014 in draft, the Registers of Scotland Information and Access Order 2014 in draft, and the Land Registration and Settlers Scotland Act 2012, Incidental, Consequential and Positional Order 2014 in draft. <coughs> now, uh, to aid us with our consideration, I'd like to welcome Fergus Ewing, um, Minister for Energy, Enterprise and Tourism, who's joined this morning by uh, Kirsten Simone Lefebvre, uh, who's Solicitor, Scottish Government Legal Directorate, uh, Hugh Welsh, who's Head of Data, and Chris Kerr, Head of Legal Policy and Legislation, both from Registers of Scotland. Welcome to you all. Um, Minister, would you like to say something to introduce these instruments? Yes, uh, thank you, Convener. I'm, I'm pleased to have been invited by the Committee to speak to these four instruments. They form part of a suite of subordinate legislation that needs to be enforced for the designated day for the Land Registration Scotland Act 2012. And uh, last month, I was pleased to make the order setting out the designated day for 8th of December this year. On that day, the new scheme of land registration provided for in the 2012 Act will come into force, and this will bring into effect a fairer and more efficient system of land registration for the people of Scotland. The instruments the Committee are considering today will provide further practical details on what requires to be in place to ensure the smooth introduction of that new scheme of land registration. One key concept of the 2012 Act is that uh, land, the land register continues to provide a state guarantee of title. Therefore, the keeper of the registers of Scotland will pay compensation to parties who have suffered loss. The land register of Scotland rate of interest and compensation regulations 2014 provides for the interest rate applied to those payments of compensation made by the keeper. Its purpose is to put the person who incurred the loss in the same financial position that he or she would have been had the loss not occurred. The government considers that the rate should be suitably flexible to respond to changing market conditions, and therefore we propose to set the rate at 1% above the Bank of England base rate. The Registers of Scotland Information and Access Order 2014 makes provision about how information is made available with the keeper and access to the keeper's registers. Public access to the registers is one of the overarching principles of registration in Scotland. The key provisions are those in Article 4 that provide for how public access is given to the keepers' registers. Access can be at the customer services centres based in Meadowbank House in Edinburgh and Hanover House in Glasgow, where members of the public are assisted by the keepers' staff to search the registers. <laughs> members of the public can also make requests by letter, by email, or through the Registers of Scotland website. These provisions help ensure clear procedures for public access to the information from the Keeper's Registers. The order provides for the Keeper to issue plain copies of documents recorded or registered in the Keeper's Registers or parts of those registers, such as the title sheet in the Land Register. This convener provides the public with a cheaper alternative to a formal extract with evidential value. Article 3 provides that in relation to the land register, the keeper will only issue extracts or plain copies showing one cadastral unit to ensure uh, accuracy. The Land Registration Scotland 212 Incidental Consequential and Transitional Order 214 is mainly technical in nature and provides amendments to the 2012 Act in addition to some consequential amendments to other legislation. As the amendments are technical, with your permission, I would not propose to go through all of the details in this statement, but would be happy to take uh, questions, or more accurately, my officials will be happy to take uh, questions <laughs> thereon. They include transitional arrangements on how the common parts of titles on the land register can be shown prior to closing the general register of seasons. The Register of Scotland Fees Order 2014, the, the last in the suite this morning, convener, 
is the first fees order to be made under the powers provided in the 212 Act. The order consolidates in one order all of the main statutory fees charged by registers of Scotland, including those for the Crofting Register and the Register of Community Interests in Land. It also introduces fees for the new products and services resulting from the 212 Act, such as advance notices uh, and, one, uh, and caveats. One key policy consideration in developing this order was no increase in the fees that the keeper charges for registering and recording deeds and documents. The level of fees also takes into account the need for the keeper to maintain financial reserves to pay compensation linked to the state guarantee provided for by the land register, provide a contingency fund for any downturn in the property market, fund the completion of the land register and provide investment in IT services. The order retains a fee for rejecting applications, but to help customers adapt to the changes resulting from the 212 Act, it provides for a two calendar month period after the designated day before the rejection fee commences. This will provide solicitors with time to master the revised requirements for registration in the Land Register. The order maintains the majority of fees at 2010 levels and indeed are at a similar level to that set in 1995 and upholds the principles of transparency, value for money and equality for citizens. The Keeper maintains her commitment to a biennial fee review with the next review due to begin in 2000. And 15. Convener, in conclusion, before I formally move the motions recommending the orders, I'd be happy to, with my colleagues, to answer any questions that you and your members may have. Thank you, uh, Minister, for that uh, introduction. Um, happy to see if any members have any uh, questions they want to pursue with the Minister. Um, Alison Johnson. Thank you. Um, uh, the Land Reform Review Group's view is that major progress is still required on land registration and I wonder if any of the instruments here will help to achieve completion of the land register within 10 years. The orders today will uh, enable the smooth operation of the running of the Register of Saisians and the, the Land Register of Scotland and of course um, it is uh, I think useful to remind ourselves convener that the, the main, the principal and the most practical function of the register is to provide a means for transactions to be carried out, both house sales and purchase and also commercial transactions, and to be carried out in such a way that ensures that there is a guaranteed title, security of title, certainty of title, and therefore security and confidence of doing business in Scotland. That is its primary function, and I think it's very important that we bear that in mind. To answer the question that uh, is put, the Land Ref Re Reform Group uh, has identified a, a, a potential measure which we um, uh, are committed to considering, uh, and we are also uh, uh, bringing forward a consultation paper to consider the issues of beneficial ownership uh, and to consult all of those who have an interest there and it. Um, I think this committee, b before I was on the committee, um, made it clear that they supported better access to information because obviously public access to who owns Scotland is really important. Can you update on any progress that's been made on an online search facility open to the public? How accessible will this information be to, to the man in the street who might just be interested? Well, I, I think that, that there is transparency, as I said in the statement, the transparency of access. Uh, both on the, the website uh, by email and also at the offices in Glasgow and Edinburgh, as I stated it earlier uh, uh, in the, this uh, uh, meeting. Um, the, the land register does, of course, show the owner of the property. Uh, this could be an individual or corporate entity, and uh, in some cases, such as property owned in trust or by companies, it doesn't reveal the beneficial ownership of that property, i.e., the beneficiaries of the trust or the shareholders of the company. But the concept of beneficial ownership, as we discussed during the passage of the bill, uh, convener, is unknown in Scots law outside of the law of trusts, tax and insolvency law. And in particular, it's not, a, it's not traditionally recognised in Scottish property law. So um, 
therefore, that's one of the reasons why we feel it's appropriate to consult in these matters. I think Mr Welsh wants to share some further information with your permission, Convener, to respond to Alison Johnson's question, if he may. Yes, uh, the public at the moment, um, there is access to a system in various means, sometimes in person, sometimes by email, and we've got a registered direct system where it's mainly business to business, but members of the public can access that as required. In most, most industries, they find it more helpful for us, for us to share the information with them for a one-off search, particularly with the register of seasons, it takes a bit of technology and a wee bit of expertise to translate them. So. We are working along the lines. Thank you. Um, can I ask one more question, Convener? Does the government have a planned programme to register public land that is not yet on the land registry? It, well, the, the, the Keeper and myself have for, uh, for some considerable time been encouraging the public sector landowners, especially the very large owners, including, for example, the Forestry Commission, to register land to do so voluntarily. And there has been considerable progress made towards achieving that objective. Plainly, with the, the desired uh, a, a policy objective of working towards a target of completion of 10 years, then there is a great deal of land in public ownership that needs to be registered. Um, a particular thought and encouragement has been given to secure that objective. Plainly, it's an enormous task. It has resource implications because the legal work involved, the preparation of plans in some cases, the question of potential issues that may arise in the course of those voluntary registrations, such as uh, disputes, uh, will be consumptive of time. And therefore, uh, I think, as you will in particular understand, convener, from your legal days, these are matters that we are considering very carefully indeed. We are considering them currently, and we are considering them together with the main public sector bodies involved, for example, the Forestry Commission. Uh, but the desire is to complete the register within 10 years, and that means that we would uh, expect the public sector to show a lead in that regard. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just ask a follow-up to um, Alison Johnson's penultimate question about beneficial ownership? Because I remember during the passage of the bill, Minister, you were very robust in your view that um, uh, identifying beneficial ownership on the register would be a very cumbersome, expensive process, and if indeed it could be achieved at all. I mean, have you changed your mind on that? Because it does sound like the, the Scottish Government has perhaps soften its position a little? Uh, well, well, no, the amendments which were brought forward, as, we re as I recall, in, during stages two and three of the bill, uh, were designed to enable the land register to disclose beneficial ownership of land. But we were of the view at that time, and, and I may characteristically perhaps have expressed my views in robust terms, that the proposed, uh, <laughs> that the, uh, proposed amendments would not have been workable in practice and would place an unnecessary burden on the applicants and the keeper. Moreover, the potential impacts of the amendments hadn't been assessed or considered, not least because they hadn't been consulted upon. And uh, for those variety of reasons, it appeared to us that they weren't amendments which commended themselves at that stage. Uh, but plainly, we do desire to see if there are any other matters that we can do and to approach this with an open mind. And that is why we're having a consultation, which I think has been welcomed by various groups that, uh, that have been exercised for this matter and pursuing these uh, policy issues for a long time. So we, we are consulting and I expect that we will be back in this place before not very long discussing the, the upshot of that, of that consultation. Uh, Chip Yes, I mean, good morning, uh, Mr. Welsh. I wonder, one of the, the concerns uh, it, it expressed in, in when we were considering the, the bill was the whole IT system and its lack of use and lack of friendliness. What has changed to encourage, as a sequitur to Alison Johnson's question, to encourage people to have ease of accessibility and how robust I think it's a new IT system that has now been, uh, is being implemented, has been implemented. I just wonder if you could uh, update us on that. At the moment, um, the main, main access via technology to our systems is Registrar's Direct, and that is well used. There's a million searches per year. Um, as, as explained, for actual members of the public to come in, um, they can actually ask us by email, electronically, they can re request, or they can appear, and we'll give them expert advice. Uh, at the moment, the Land Registration Act itself, we're implementing that at the moment and we're making the required changes to the technology to enable the Act to take place. Um, so there's no major changes at the moment. 
So I, I'm wrong in the assumption that the previous IT system had been either scrapped or it's still being still being used. Is that right? No, we're, just, we're working our way through the actual process of the system. Yeah. We're adding to what we've got at the moment, and we're continually viewing our IT as part of the whole process of our, our fee reviews um, going forward. Thank you. Um, can I ask a question about the, the fees order, Minister? Because I, I will recall, as, as you will, when we dealt with the bill, uh, an issue was identified that at that stage the registers had quite substantial reserves that had been built up over over uh, a period of time when uh, the level of transactions was high. Do, do you happen to know, or perhaps your officials know, what the level of reserves within Registers of Scotland um, currently sits at? Um, well, I, I don't have that information in front of me. Now. I have uh, been considering this matter, but I don't have this particular information in front of me. And uh, I think this is subject to um, an internal exchange at the moment about you know, the, the level of appropriate reserves and the discussion is taking place there and end. Uh, plainly, in my opening statement, I referred to the number of matters for which allowance must be made, and uh, the, these include uh, you know, assessing what claims, what sum must be set aside for potential claims. Uh, and I must say, the Keeper's record in claims has been very, very good. I mean, the, the failure rate and uh, part of the Keeper is, is, is extraordinarily low, uh, as I think is, is known. But also, there needs to be consideration given to the other matters I mentioned, including if there's a drop in the property market, and secondly, um, the cost of IT uh, and adapting the systems to be able to fulfil the functions as set out in the 212 Act. So all of these things involve, as I think members will appreciate, an exercise in judgment as to what the a sum is appropriate. The, this, is a, this is an art, not a science, and each matter must be considered very carefully uh, and therefore that's why it's under consideration at the motion at the moment. I mean, I can um, say, a convener, as I've reminded myself during, a, during speaking to you, that uh, the, the record of uh, the, the most recent statistics available showing um, the volume of transactions show a very positive picture indeed, a, a rise in house sales and purchase, and uh, an even, a thumping rise, which I, I think from memory was 55%, in the volume of registrations of commercial property transactions. And therefore, it does seem to be the case that the, the most recent statistics available, which I think were for the last year, show a rise in the number of property transactions. That, in turn, means that there's a more robust financial situation for the keeper uh, if uh, that property market continues to be robust and indeed growing then consequent, consequently, uh, by definition, the need to maintain substantial reserves reduces. But these are always a matter of judgments, and um, perhaps if I may, Convener, uh, af after I've had a process of discussion with the Keeper, which may take uh, uh, some a few weeks at least, or perhaps slightly longer, I can come back to the, the committee and give you a more detailed and considered answer, setting out the, both the level of reserves and perhaps a short statement of the criteria applied in reaching that decision so that this matter is, is uh, as we like to be in the Scottish Government, an open book. That would be very helpful, Minister. Thank you for that. Um, I mean, I think you're, you're absolutely right to identify that you know, after a period of, of um, slow movement in the property market, both domestic and commercial, it appears that uh, there's been a substantial recovery. Income, therefore, will be increasing, as will, of course, will be activity. I, I mean, I remember when we dealt with the bill, there was an issue about I think at that stage there was a, a, a scheme of um, voluntary redundancy at Register of Scotland and people were being encouraged to leave. Are, are, are we now in a recruitment phase at Registers or, 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 or do Registers feel there's enough capacity within the current uh, workforce to deal with the increased volume of transactions? At the moment the intakes have risen 9% in the last year. Um, we dealt with, for registration point of view, for land registration, it's about 280,000 applications. Um, See, we're doing them quicker than ever before. 50% um, of all applications are now done within five days. In terms of staff, we have reduced our numbers over a um, recent period, I think from a high of around 1,400 down to 900 at the moment. Um, I think in the last year we did slightly increase, mainly um, specialist areas such as IT and um, sort of legal areas. Um, at the moment, we're confident of going forward um, of dealing with the Land Registration Act and also um, any future enhancement. The actual triggers at the moment from the Land Registration Act will generate an extra 8,000 applications per year of first registrations. 
So that's on top of the 27,000 we dealt with last year, and we're confident of doing that. Within the current yes. um, staff resource? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Mike, you can um, uh, Thank you, Convener. You mentioned, Minister, that some of the challenges for public sector organisations, and I dare say big landowners across the country in terms of uh, um, registering titles and surveying them and so on, and I appreciate that this may also present a challenge for registers of Scotland, but do you feel that um, harnessing this 21st century technology, that potential, um, as well as transparency, ease of access and so on, offers a, a very big prize of efficiency to all who are concerned with uh, conveyancing and uh, property in Scotland? Uh, yes, I do. I think, the, without a shadow of a doubt, the 212 Act will help uh, uh, smooth the process, make it more efficient, uh, make it easier to, to operate uh, and assist the smooth running of commercial and domestic transactions in Scotland, and that must be a good thing. I mean, a, a, this is really for the anoraks, namely myself and the convener, but I mean, it is much, much easier and a much less time-consuming task to carry out a house purchase and sale conveyance, a, especially acting for the purchaser when the property is in the land register for the, for the very reason that the Saisine register, there is not necessarily a map or a plan. Deeds can be written in handwriting, sometimes not always scrutable. Uh, uh, and the whole process takes a long, long time. It's very repetitive. It's very old-fashioned. And, of course, the, the cost is very often borne by the, by the public, the, the client. Uh, so the land register is a much simpler process. It's map-based. It's based on the Ordnance Survey map. And you can get a land certificate which shows you the plan and all the conditions in title, the extent of the title, the name of the owner, the, the consideration paid. And it's also very useful for people who are buying houses to see what the price was paid for the houses next door and to give uh, an easy idea of, uh, of how to have, if you like, uh, you know, house moving with tier, without tiers or as few tiers as possible. So um, generally the land register is good news and the 212 Act makes a number of specific changes which will further are designed substantially further to improve that process. Um, Mr McKenzie mentioned the uh, large landowners. Um, I should make it clear, convener, that I'm very keen to make sure that we engage fully and appropriately with uh, large landowners, and I've arranged to meet with uh, Scottish Land and Estates in the next couple of weeks, uh, first here and then at uh, Moy, the Moy Game Fair, on the 1st of August, to have discussions. The Keeper will be fully involved in those discussions. Um, and the last point I make is that uh, uh, at the moment, with the level of maximum fees, uh, you know, I think it's very, it would be a sensible and uh, uh, prudent decision for landowners to to proceed with a voluntary registration in many cases. Uh, and of course, by doing that, it, it will I help I've, uh, it generate uh, work for the legal profession. And they're just coming out of a time when many young conveyancing lawyers have been laid off. So I'm very much hoping that the combined effect of the policy changes that we're proposing, as well as the work that we've already done, will encourage uh, a large landowners to consider the voluntary registration of their estates uh, I'm working in positively and uh, in voluntary cooperation with them to that purpose. And one of the benefits will be, I think, to stimulate a little bit of, uh, of uh, employment or re-employment within the legal profession, especially of young lawyers who may have been the casualties of the recession. Are no other questions? We can move on to the next item on the agenda. Item three, and Minister, I would invite you, uh, if you would, to formally move uh, the uh, four uh, instruments that are before us. Formally moved. Thank you. Do any members wish to uh, speak or comment on these instruments? No? Okay. In that case, um, do it all together. If, mem if members are content to take these together? Yeah, yeah. okay. In that case, the question is that we agree to motions S4M10302, S4M10303, S4M10304 and S4M10305. Are we agreed? Agreed. We are all agreed. Thank you uh, very much. These motions have been passed by the committee. Um, are members content that uh, the uh, convener and clerk produce a short factual report of the committee's 
decisions and arrange to have that published. Yes. Yep. Thank you very much. At this point, we will suspend briefly to allow the Minister and officials to leave. Thank you, Minister, for attending. Right, if we can uh, reconvene. <coughs> Item four on the agenda is another piece of subordinate legislation, in this case a negative instrument, uh, the Land Register Rules, etc., Scotland Regulations 2014, SSI 2014-150. Do any members have any uh, issues that they would like to raise uh, in connection with this? Okay. Um, if not, uh, are we happy simply to uh, note uh, the uh, instrument? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and at this point, we will move into private session. Thank you.